Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Sun Devil Extra. This is the Mountain America Credit Union Sun Devil Radio Network program that each week shines a spotlight on the teams, athletes, coaches, and stories making news in Arizona State University Sun Devil Athletics. Hi everybody, I'm Tim Healy, the radio play-by-play -play voice of Sun Devil football, men's basketball, and baseball, and it's my pleasure to serve as your host each week, and we thank you for joining us. Also joining us this week as our athletic department co-host of the week, and trust me folks, this is a highly coveted position being my weekly athletic department co-host. I have the pleasure of welcoming to the show a gentleman that I had the pleasure of interviewing many, many times when he was a Sun Devil football player at Arizona State playing for head coach Dennis Erickson from 2007 to 2011. Nowadays, he's back home at ASU as an assistant athletic director for development in the Sun Devil Club. What a pleasure it is to welcome my buddy Bo Moose to the show. How are you, partner? Fantastic, Tim. Thanks for having me on. I, I can't count the number of times I interviewed you as a player and now getting to co-host a show with you. Yeah, I feel, time, like, I feel like I've arrived uh, now. This is full, Sitting next to the king here. This is full circle stuff. <laughs> Tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about your position, uh, your job here at Arizona State. Sure. So uh, working in the Sun Devil Club, uh, our primary fundraising branch for the athletic department. Um, we have a great unit of nine frontline fundraisers and a support staff, an annual fund director. And basically what we do is, is we go out and we do our best to drive support uh, to all of our programs um, in a variety of ways. So, you know, we're, we're the ones who are constantly out with the constituency, mm -hmm. um, making friends, shaking hands, kissing babies, et cetera. Yeah. And you do a great job of it, I'll tell you. And it just seems fitting that Bo Moose is in athletics administration. Given his uh, family background, Bo's dad, Bill Moose, was a longtime, highly, re highly respected athletic director at Montana, Washington State, Oregon, and the University of Nebraska. I don't think I got him chronologically right, did I? But you I almost close. nailed it. Swap, you got to swap Oregon and Washington State, and you're okay. right on it. Well, what was that like growing up uh, in a household like that? Was that always a thought of yours to enter that field? Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of the only thing I ever knew, right? I, I think I was, I was born when he was uh, the, the associate athletic director at Washington State. And by the time he went on to Montana, I was six months old. So it's all I've ever known. And then grew up kind of in that um, phase at, at the University of Oregon where they kind of, the department got on the right path and really became a nationally recognized brand. So that was really cool. Um, and you know, I was one of those kids growing up having been around college athletics so closely, like my dream was never to be, you know, playing the NFL. I, I wanted to be a college football player. I wanted to be mm. a player in, in, in the then Pac-10 conference. And so when it, when it came time to, uh, you know, for, for me to be recruited, um, thought, you know, really long and hard about uh, being a duck, but took my official visit uh, to Tempe in January, and that's hard to say no. I you know? would say so. Yeah. And playing for a coach in Dennis Erickson, who himself had strong Northwestern ties and a Seattle area native, of course, the former head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, but also the former head coach of the Washington State Cougars. Yeah, absolutely. He's He's one of the greats. Playing for him was was a pleasure. He's he's what has been called historically and from you know almost everyone who's played for him a player's coach, and mm -hmm. he was certainly that. He was always supportive. Um, he allowed us to have fun, maybe too much at times, um, <laughs> but I, I I was so thrilled to have the opportunity to play for a college football Hall of Famer like Dennis Erickson. What do you remember from your years here? Uh, of course, the first year, the Sun Devils in Dennis's first year won a Pac-10 co-championship. And we were just talking before we taped about your final year, 2011. And boy, that has to be kind of a frustrating thing to look back on. That was a year when the Sun Devils, I think, were 6-2 and two nearing the midway or past the midway point of the season, but just got on the, the skids there the final month. Yeah, just kind of fell apart there down the stretch. Um, we had had some injuries, but we were really a, a very talented team, as you remember, a team that had a lot of high expectations. Um, so much of us from that team are still very close, and anytime we're together as a group, it's, it's, that always comes up. We always talk about the month of November, but to your point, if you look back to the beginning of Coach Erickson's tenure, a shared Pac-10 title, and 
um, you know, we, we had some ups and downs, but it was a thrill to just be a part of that program during that time. One of your teammates, of course, our buddy uh, Brock Osweiler, and uh, what a terrific season he had in 2011 as the Sun Devil quarterback and now distinguishing himself as an analyst on ESPN. Yeah, he's, he's doing really well. I was actually just with him this weekend. It was my birthday yesterday. Well, and we happy had a little, birthday. Belated you. happy birthday, yes, young man. 35. A young 35. Absolutely. Uh, but I was just with him um, on Sunday. We had a little gathering and sure enough, that conversation about the 2011 team came <laughs> up as it yeah. always does. But he's doing great things. He's a natural at it. Mm -hmm. uh, He's such a student of the game, and I know the folks at ESPN are extremely happy to have him. Well, let's talk some Sun Devil sports, shall we? A busy week in Arizona State Athletics, as they always are, it seems like, during the school year. We're going to start with a dramatic finish to the Sun Devils wrestling match last Saturday at Mullet Arena, ASU, the number 12 team in the country, taking on 21st-ranked Stanford. The Devils trailing Stanford 17-12, to heading into the final match of the day, featuring heavyweight Colton Schultz. Uh, the Sun Devils literally, literally and figuratively, were pinning their hopes for victory on the shoulders of Colton Schultz. And boy, did he deliver as he pinned Stanford's Peter Ming to get the six points that catapulted the Sun Devils to an 18-17 victory in front of nearly 1,300 fans at Mullet Arena. Winners of three straight and four of their last five matches now, the Sun Devils will close out the regular season with two home matches this coming weekend, both at the Mullet. Saturday night, uh, February 24th, they'll take on Lehigh, an uh, East Coast wrestling powerhouse, at 7 p.m. And then less than 24 hours later at 1 p.m. Sunday, a match against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Boy, Bo Mo uh, Mullet Arena is uh, much more than a hockey building we're finding out these days. Absolutely, absolutely. Volleyball showed us the similar thing this fall. Um, I think it's it's just an exciting venue, and it's, and it's an intimate venue, and it's a great place to go watch college athletics in any form, right? And then mm -hmm. Colton Schultz, I always thought if I was a wrestler, I'd be Colton Schultz. We're yeah. pretty similar in that way. I think, if he was, <laughs> I think if he was a football guy, he'd be a nose tackle, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, oh, so absolutely. To watch it come down to the wire like that and for him to you know, get the win, it's big time. Yeah, we had Colton on the show last week, and I asked him about that, and uh, the competitor that he is, as you can imagine, he absolutely relishes those moments when it's basically on his shoulders to get the meat victory. Yeah, yeah, and he, you can see he kind of plays mind games. He was sitting there with the shades on, you know what I mean, before his match, and it was, it was awesome to see. He's a stud. He sure is. You know, another great venue to watch sports, Phoenix Municipal Stadium, uh, the home of Arizona State Baseball. And it was a busy place last weekend. It'll be busy again this weekend as Coach Willie Bloomquist's third Arizona State team uh, started its season with a series win, a two out of three series win against a Santa Clara team that went to the NCAA tournament one year ago. The Arizona State offense was on point all weekend as the Devils totaled 38 runs on 46 hits in the three games, including 10 home runs over the course of the series. Outfielder Isaiah Jackson, six hits, including a pair of homers, nine RBI in the three games, while newcomer Harris Williams, the left fielder and a transfer from the University of San Francisco, had six hits, two homers, and he had six RBIs in those three ball games. This weekend, it's going to be busy at, the, uh, at uh, Phoenix Muni Bow as the Ohio State Buckeyes come in for a four-game series Thursday through Sunday. Absolutely, and it, it was very exciting to see what baseball did this last weekend. I mean, opening weekend, all that offense, that's the type of performance you want to have to make sure with a great crowd those people keep coming back. So really excited uh, to see Coach Bloomquist and his staff and those kids get off to such a great start. I think all three of the games drew over 3,000 fans to uh, Phoenix Muni and Ohio State on tap this weekend. By the way, former Sun Devil catcher Max Rossiter joins me on the play-by-play -play of Sun Devil Baseball on the radio this year once again, and we will have the Friday Ohio State ASU game for you on KAZG 1440 AM and the Sun Devil Radio Network. Our pregame coverage will start at 6.15 p.m. Softball won three of its five games at the Littlewood Classic this past weekend at Farrington Stadium. Uh, Coach Megan Bartlett, Sun Devils defeating BYU, Illinois State, and Memphis while dropping games to Virginia Tech and Cal State Fullerton. This weekend, more softball at Farrington. ASU will host the Sun Devil Classic 
games against Seton Hall, Ohio State, Texas State, Utah Valley, and Idaho State. And both, I'm not mistaken, I think the Sun Devils are going to be playing something like eight games in five days at Farrington. They're going to be busy. Yeah. I'd encourage uh, our fan base and supporters of softball uh, to get out and go support the girls and, and get a look at the new addition to the facility uh, that just finished up. Uh, very proud of uh, our staff's effort and driving support to that thing. So we're going to be there checking it out as well. Absolutely. Men's basketball back home at Desert Financial Arena this weekend. They're actually the final three games, home games, of the regular season on tap at DFA as the Sun Devils this weekend will host the Washington schools, the Washington Huskies here Thursday night, February 22nd, a 7 p.m. tip at Desert Financial. And then the team that is the talk of the Pac-12 this year, the Washington State Cougars, who enter the weekend one half game out of first place in the Pac-12. The Cougars will be here for the final time as a Pac-12 team to play the Sun Devils Saturday with a 6 p.m. tip. And by the time they get here, Bo, the Cougs might be in first place in the conference if they're able to beat the Arizona Wildcats in Tucson on Thursday. Yeah, it's very possible. It'll be interesting to watch. It'll be, you know, I, again, encourage folks to come out and, and, and watch those two games as it's the last time we'll have them in town, right? So mm -hmm. I look forward to going and checking out the Washington State game, saying hi to some of my old there you Cougar go. friends. Absolutely. Kyle Dodd will join me on the broadcast of those Sun Devil games. Uh, the uh, Thursday game will be on ESPN 6.20 a.m. when the Devils take on the Huskies, and our airtime will be 6.30 that night. Then Saturday, we're on the air at 5.30 for the Washington State broadcast, which you can hear on Arizona Sports 98.7 FM. And oh, by the way, the homestand and the uh, home schedule for this season conclude next Wednesday, February 28th, when those Arizona Wildcats come to Desert Financial Arena to take on the Sun Devils. Women's basketball is coming off a split of its two home games against the Washington schools last weekend. They will head to the Bay Area this weekend for games at Cal Friday at 8 p.m. and at number three Stanford Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. Arizona time. And our buddy Jeff Munn will be along with him and will bring you the broadcast of both games on the Sun Devil Radio Network and KDUS 1060 AM with uh, air times 7.30 Friday evening, 12.30 Sunday afternoon. The 20th ranked Sun Devil men's tennis team is back home in the Valley and they're back at the Whiteman Tennis Center this week to host both Nevada and Grand Canyon. Both of those matches coming up on Friday, February 21st. Last week, Coach Matt Hill's Sun Devils uh, competed at the ITA National Men's Team Indoor Championship in New York City, where after losses to TCU in South Carolina, the Sun Devils defeated number 13 Michigan in a consolation match. And by the way, number 13 Michigan that matches the highest ranked opponent that Sun Devil men's tennis has defeated since the reinstitution of the program several years ago. The other was a 13th ranked Michigan team back in 2019, while the 25th ranked Sun Devil women's tennis team will also be at home this Sunday, February 25th at the Whiteman Tennis Center to take on Ohio State. Sheila McInerney's team losing 4-0 to number one ranked Oklahoma State last week before rallying to beat Cal Poly on Sunday. Just a litany of events on campus this weekend, Bo. Both tennis programs at home at the Whiteman Tennis Center. Uh, we got basketball, we got baseball, we got wrestling, we got a little bit of everything. Huh? It's a wonderful week ahead for Sun Devil fans. That's why they should maybe just stay at the old hotel right around the corner and just <laughs> hang out on campus for that's, the next week. That's not a bad idea, come to think of it. One other sport we want to mention, the seventh-ranked Sun Devil women's water polo team split a pair of matches in Los Angeles last weekend, losing a close one to the number one ranked team in the country, falling 14-12 to to UCLA in what was the Sun Devils Mountain Pacific Sports Federation opener. And then they beat Cal State Fullerton 15 to 10. And by the way, Sun Devil star Lutza Patovery had 10 goals over the weekend, seven of them coming in the game against UCLA. Water Polo will compete out of town this weekend at the Barbara Calbus Invitational that takes place in Irvine, California. What a great opportunity, really, this weekend provides uh, for Sun Devil fans to show their fandom so many sports where they can come out and support their teams and support the programs of Arizona State Athletics. No question. And, and again, just want to encourage as many 
Sun Devils as possible to come out and show support this weekend. A really an important weekend for us as well. Um, so I'll be out there. I know a lot of my team will be out there going from venue to venue, mm-hmm. shaking hands, saying hello. So come say hi. Well, boy, it's great catching up with you, my friend. This felt like shades of 2010, 2011, a post-practice interview. It did. Out at the Kajikawa yeah. practice field with it my did. buddy Bo Moose. Yep, yep. Those, I, I'll always cherish those times. And any time I get to, to chop it up with you, with a microphone involved, I'm always, <laughs> it always excites me. So it's always good to see you, my friend. And you nailed it. Great having you on, Bo. Thanks for joining us. That's Bo Moose, former Sun Devil football player and now assistant athletic director for development in the Sun Devil Club. He has been our guest host this week on Sun Devil Extra. Coming up, we'll get you caught up on Sun Devil football as we visit with one of ASU's top freshman players from a year ago. You'll meet offensive lineman Sean Na'a when we return in a moment. This is Sun Devil Extra from the Mountain America Credit Union Sun Devil Radio Network. We continue now with this week's edition of Sun Devil Extra from the Mountain America Credit Union Sun Devil Radio Network. I'm Tim Healy, the radio play-by-play voice of Sun Devil football, men's basketball, and baseball, and we're glad you're with us this week. Uh, The Sun Devil football team will be the focus for the remainder of this week's show as we get set to visit with two of Coach Kenny Dillingham's players, one from each side of the ball. Our first guest came to Arizona State last year as a true freshman from the Los Angeles area due to numerous injuries in the Sun Devil offensive line in 2023. Our first guest was pressed into duty as a true freshman, and boy, did he respond with solid play last year. In fact, he ended up starting the final seven games of the 2023 season for ASU and ended up playing just about every spot in the offensive line. We are delighted to welcome soon-to-be sophomore offensive lineman Sean Na'a to the show. How you doing, Sean? Good okay, to see good, you. Good. How are you? Doing great. Uh, reflect back on last year. What was it like for you? You come in as a true freshman, pressed into immediate duty as an offensive lineman at one of the most challenging positions on the field. Yeah, obviously it was something I didn't expect, you know, coming in. Uh, I thought I was just going to, like, slowly get into it. But, you know, getting thrown, getting thrown into the fire, um, you know, it was cool. I didn't back down. Just mm-hmm. uh, learning from Leaf, uh, yeah. Faltano, and the rest of the boys, and Coach T, they definitely made it easier for me. What were your expectations coming in? Did you think you'd end up redshirting, or what, what exactly what were your expect, uh, expectations playing time-wise as you, ca- as you came to ASU last year? Yeah, yeah. I obviously came in. Uh, I was talking to Coach T um, the summer, summer when I came in, mm-hmm. and uh, he was saying that we had a lot of older guys. So I was just gonna, um, you know, learn and sit back and learn as much as possible. And, uh, red shedding was a possibility for sure. Yeah, but it certainly didn't happen. And I imagine you have to feel a little bit more confident heading into this year because of the playing time you did get. Oh yeah, for sure. I definitely feel more comfortable, especially in the system. Um, feel more comfortable asking questions, and just yeah. What was it like for you and the other guys in the O line? I've never seen one position group in all my years here at Arizona State that was so ravaged by injury as the O-line was in 2023. What was it like for you guys going through the season, continuing to battle and compete shorthanded though you were? Yeah, obviously it was was, uh, not easy, but um, in our O-line room, we're all very uh, strong people. And Coach T always tells us to strain and compete as much as possible. So uh, we didn't really let it waver us or try to distract us from other way. Who did you look up to in the O-line? You mentioned Leif Fautanu for one, your center. I thought he displayed a lot of great leadership last year. Who else? Uh, definitely Joey Ramos, uh, Shone Finau, Bram Walden, uh, Kate Briggs, basically all the, all the vets. Mm-hmm. Look up to all those guys. Ask, I can ask them anything to, to help me out. Boy, it really helps, doesn't it, when you have uh, guys in your position, group leaders like that, guys who've been around the block and know what's going on? Yeah, especially when they uh, have as many uh, plays as they have. They have all of them have like, numerous snaps in every game, so it definitely helps a lot. Now, you personally, I wonder how challenging was it for you playing so many different spots in the O line a year ago? Uh, yeah, it was a little challenging, but um, like I said, just listening to Coach T and Coach Dilly and like trusting their plan uh, and just trusting my technique definitely made it uh, easier for me. What do you there. think is your best position in the O line? If you obviously have most young men in your situation probably hope to play on Sundays down the road. And what do you think is your best spot? Uh, I'd go left guard for sure. Left I'd guard? definitely feel more comfortable in that. What are the, some of the differences in technique or uh, things you have to be aware of, like changing, say, from guard to tackle? Uh, more space, uh, especially playing uh, inside at guard. They're more closer. 
Uh, when you're when you're out there at tackle, uh, the DNs got so much more space and they're more athletic. So mm -hmm. yeah, you got to work with that speed. Yeah. What was it like for you guys and your team last year, going through such a difficult season, and yet, you know, we came, we'd come out to practice every week, and by the end of the season, the practices were every bit as upbeat in November as they were in September, and you guys continued to compete even as the losses mounted. Yeah, uh, Coach Daly talks about competing no matter what. Uh, you know, nobody cares about our situation, what's going on. So no matter what, we're going to compete every day as much as possible. What's the vibe like in the locker room now as you bring in a whole bunch of newcomers once again? You have transfer portal and freshman recruiting classes that are both ranked among the nation's top 25. What's the vibe you're sensing in the locker room? Oh, it's great. Great vibes. Um, really excited to go out there, especially for spring ball. We have a lot of guys on both sides of the ball that came in. So just really excited. Um, to get out there with those guys. I was going to say, you must be really chomping at the bit to get out and, and start integrating the new teammates into the system, right? Yeah, you? for sure, uh, definitely. Especially uh, the new, um, our new playbook, our offensive coordinator, Coach Arroyo, uh, imp implemented some plays today. And we went through them, and it was, it, was, it was good. You talk about Coach Arroyo. What do you think he'll bring to the offense? Fast. We'll come out there fast, especially with Coach Dilly. That combination is going to be good. So, yeah, just really excited to go out there. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned several times in the interview your uh, terrific offensive line coach, Sanga Tuatele, who had some health issues early last season but was able to overcome those. Uh, what have you learned from him in his time as your O-line coach? Oh, he's definitely taught me a lot, especially uh, the little things and just keeping the standard and just keeping yourself um, just at, like high expectations for yourself. Uh, he's definitely taught me a lot um, technique-wise, game-wise, so yeah, he helps. What about Coach Dillingham? What have you learned from him? I've never seen a guy who, with, with the energy and the motor that he has as a head coach. Just have fun no matter what. Um, always try to put a smile on your face and just go out there and work as hard as much as possible. That's pretty cool. What uh, out of high school, uh, Sean, led you to choose Arizona State? Uh, it was definitely, I'd say, it was closer to home for sure for my family. And uh, Coach Tuitella actually recruited me when he was at Fresno State. So just building that connection with him. Um, and just trusting him because he told me to wait because he had to get a lot of transfer portal guys. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just having that relationship with him uh, before definitely helped. So I say that. What are your thoughts now on being part of the first Arizona State team that will play as a member of the Big 12 Conference in 2024? Excited, really excited to go out there, especially um, the competition that we're going to play. Uh, a lot of great teams in that conference, and I, I think we're going to compete. What are your post college plans and what are you studying and what do you hope to do other than play pro football once you get done at ASU? Uh, right now I'm, I'm exploring but I'm looking into kinesiology and maybe I can uh, be a trainer someday mm -hmm. with that. So yeah. Noble thought indeed. Well Sean you did uh, great work as a true freshman last year and hopefully even more great things to come in your future in the maroon and gold. Thanks for stopping by and visiting Thank you. with us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. Sun Devil offensive lineman Sean Na'a our guest on this segment of Sun Devil Extra. Coming up, we will close out this week's show by meeting a member of the Sun Devil defensive line. Like Sean, he was a freshman a year ago who played well and is looking for bigger and better things in 2024. You'll meet CJ Fight when we return in a moment. This is Sun Devil Extra from the Mountain America Credit Union Sun Devil Radio Network. Welcome back to the final segment of this week's installment of Sun Devil Extra from the Mountain America Credit Union Sun Devil Radio Network. I'm Tim Healy, the radio play-by-play -play broadcaster for Sun Devil Athletics, and we thank you for joining us this week. As we continue our discussion on Sun Devil football, we welcome to the show now yet another uh, member of the Sun Devil football team from 2023. He plays on the defensive side of the ball, like our guest in the previous segment, Sean Na'a, he was a true freshman a year ago and uh, played in the defensive line and played very well. He had 15 tackles, two for loss, a pass breakup, and a fumble recovery as a true freshman. 11 games in which he played, and he started five of them, including four of the last five games last season. And he figures to be uh, prominent in the Sun Devils' plans in the D-line in 2024. He comes from Tatum, Texas, and we are delighted to welcome defensive lineman C.J. Fight. To the show. CJ, good to see you. We had you on Coach Dillingham's yes, show uh, over at Dave & Buster's. Yes, now we're sir. doing the uh, the live uh, Zoom thing. How you doing, bud? I'm doing good by yourself. I'm doing great. Tell us a little bit about how the off-season's going. Give, give fans an idea of what you guys do in the off-season because it really isn't an off-season for you guys, nice. is it? It's, it's a lot of work going into it. We're just we working, waking up early, getting lift in, 
you know, you see the see the same faces every day. Just <laughs> going out there, scream, scream, screaming, 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 lifting, 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 having weights, and then so it's just pretty much the same thing over and over. And now, week. and spring ball looms on the horizon, yeah. doesn't it? How, yeah, how you, yeah. There must be a lot of excitement anticipating the start oh, of spring sure. ball. It's exciting for sure, especially with the the depth we have in the room now. It's just a whole a lot of competition you know, that's going to go on, and we're already competing just in the weight rooms, the team comp. So mm-hmm. it's just a lot of competition and a lot of anticipation leading up to spring ball so everybody can show what they're made of. Yeah. Let's reflect back on your 2023 season. We talked a little bit with Sean Na about this, but uh, uh, tell us what were your expectations as you came to Arizona State as a freshman in terms of the playing time you'd get and uh, how you feel you did getting a lot of playing time as it turned out. Well, Originally, my plan was to come in, just get my body right, just take it slow, learn from the people ahead of me. But then spring ball came around and started started building up my confidence and believing I could get in the mix. So then mm-hmm. after that, it was just keeping it steady and steadily like rising and getting better each day. And uh, I felt I felt I I, I did. I did okay, but obviously I want to improve this year and just keep it getting better, better, better every year. I have high expectations for myself, so yeah. I was just trying to set high expectations and trying to consistently meet those and getting getting better each day. What were the biggest adjustments that you had to make going from high school ball to immediately playing in uh, major college football at the Pac-12 level last speed year? Speed for sure. The speed of the games changed way a lot faster. It's just even you run tempo tempo teams in high school. It's nothing compared to tempo teams in college, and just mm-hmm. even though it's not tempo, it's still fast. And you have to get the call from the sideline, and then you have to assess the backfield and see what the linemen are giving you. And it's just uh, that's pretty much the biggest thing. Which are, and the eye discipline that's big too. Mm-hmm. Just seeing what the offense line is giving you, and that's that's one thing I have to improve on is my eye discipline from whether it's seeing the run and putting my hand placement, or if it's seeing the pass while I'm expecting to run and converting running passes, things like that, that's, that's the biggest difference. You heard me recite your stats from a year ago. How did you analyze your performance as a true freshman? Obviously, it's uh, something to build on. It's, I'm not, I'm not going to downplay it. I'm, I'm proud of how I uh, perform, but still, I need to improve, and there's always improvement to be done, mm-hmm. for sure. Now, you have a new position coach in uh, 2024. Dyron uh, Reynolds comes to Arizona State, having previously... He has a wealth of experience in coaching at the collegiate level. He last year at Michigan State, but he spent a lot of years in the Pac-12 at Stanford. What mm-hmm. have you learned from him? And uh, talk about the association you'll have with Coach Reynolds. I was, I'm, I'm excited to work with him. Today was our first day, like actually getting uh, installed, getting the stuff installed with him. So just uh, being able to continue to do that and being able to continue to learn from him is going to be big. He's already dropped some nuggets just just walking <laughs> by. He's, mm-hmm. It's just little things, talking about just things like get off and eye discipline, for sure. That's that's one of the things he brought up to me as well, is the eye discipline. So, yes, yeah, I'm excited to be able to work with him. You also get to work with a gentleman who's a terrific defensive coordinator and coach, Brian Ward. And there were moments last year that your defense had great moments, most notably, I think, holding the uh, eventual national runner-up Washington Huskies without an offensive touchdown mm-hmm in that game in Seattle last October. Talk about working with Coach Ward again. Coach Ward, he's, he's, he's a great guy, and great, great coach. And I even, I even asked him, I was like, what was the difference when we, when we played Washington and all the other teams? And he was like, we just did what, like, what we were supposed to do. Like, he did, we did what we were taught. We did like, exactly, like we did our 111. That's our biggest say. thing. Our biggest thing is doing your 111 yeah. and uh, appreciating the guy next to you and what he does in his effort. So that game, we had appreciation for the dudes next to us. We did our jobs, and when you do your jobs, it's got the job gets done. So. Isn't it amazing how many coaches use in some different phraseology the same mantra? Of course, uh, uh, the former great head coach of the New England Patriots, Bill Belichick, his simple mantra, do your job. Sure. And Coach Ward phrases it differently, but it's the same message, do yeah, your sir. 111, do your isn't it? Yes, yeah, sir. We, we hear that every day. Do your 111th, do your 111th. That, that's what we hear every day. So it's getting instilled in everybody's mind. In that game, everybody truly did their 111th, and that's what made the difference in that game. CJ, what was it like for the team last year? I, I admired, and I think a lot of people who watched your team game in and game out admired how the way you guys competed. 
even as the season was going the wrong way and the losses started mounting up. To what do you uh, attribute that ability to compete that your team de displayed a year ago? And uh, give us a sense of what last year was like for the team. Uh, it, it for sure came from uh, the coach Dilly. Dilly coach Dilly brought in. Uh, he still still trying to instill in everybody's head. Even at, we had the team comp uh, on Friday, and he was talking about. He he lost in a game in Madden and he wanted to play again. And it was like <laughs> then he he ended up winning that game after he lost and he said he couldn't settle with a tie so he wow. had to play again. So it's just he's like he he wants to everybody to know like it's not it's not okay to lose it's not okay to give up. So it's just uh, being able to fight to the end and not giving up even if the season's not going your way. I mean mm -hmm. after that it's pretty much it's 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 a pride thing and like how how are you as a man? It's just how. It's your character. It's, mm -hmm. it's really character at that point. It's just trying to make mess up other people's seasons. Since like yeah. at this point, like all you can do is pretty much mess up people's seasons. Yeah. Just build your character and just just work. Something you can build on the, in terms of building this program, isn't it? Oh yes, sir. For sure. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. I'm the play-by-play -play guy. You play analyst for a minute. Give us your assessment of the uh, of your position group, the room now, the D the D line with the additions that you've had this year. As of just as of now, this year. Oh, it's it's yeah. it's a deep room. Mm -hmm. We we for sure, well, we've recruited we've recruited well. We've got some good guys that came in. We have some some vets, some younger guys. So it's just from top to bottom, we have a, a good deep room. Like we had a, we we're in the D line room today, and we had just enough seats for everybody. And there's about <laughs> there's a good bit of seats in there. So yeah. it's, there's a lot of yeah, we got a, we got a good. Good, uh, good group going. I thought you were going to say for a moment that everybody was wearing one of those name tags. Hi, my name is <laughs> right. <laughs> nah, we uh, coach Coach Dilly. He's making sure everybody knows everybody yeah. just from all the things we do. So everybody knows pre everybody pretty well. Right? It seems to me, CJ, this spring ball is going to be really important because for you have sure. so many new parts coming in to start getting uh -huh. them assembled into the unit that you hope to put on the field in September. Yes, yeah, sir. It's, it's going to be. It's gonna be experience. It's gonna be a challenge. It's gonna be just competitive. You know, it's not. It's not gonna be anything personal. We're still gonna be close. We're still gonna teach each other uh, the things we know mm -hmm. and things and help each other with things we don't know. And but at the end of the day, it is a competition. We're competing and we're competing to get the spot. But we're still gonna love each other and we're still a team at the end of the day, brotherhood. So we're still gonna love each other up and be happy for the man. Well, you and our guest in segment two, Sean Naa, the offensive lineman. It seems to me you guys are in kind of unique positions. You have the honor of having played for the last ASU team that played in the Pac-12 conference, mm -hmm. and now you're going to be part of the first ASU team playing in the Big 12 conference. Yes, uh, share with me your thoughts on heading to the Big 12, especially for you being a native of Texas, yeah. and you got about a quarter of the teams in the Big 12 are from the state of mm -hmm. Texas. Yeah, I was excited when I first heard the news. Just because growing up, I've always wanted to play in the Big 12. That was my pretty much all the my dream schools are in the Big 12. Mm -hmm. So being able to go and uh, play those teams and have the fam my family be able to make more games, make away games, home games, mm -hmm. that's, that's big. So I, I, like, I like the mood of the Big 12 for sure. I think we're all excited to see how that is going to unfold, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, share with us your thoughts in terms of uh, what are you majoring in? What do you, other than pro football, what do you mm -hmm. hope to be doing with uh, yourself uh, after ASU? As of right now, I've focused on, not focused, well, I'm majoring in entrepreneur, business entrepreneurship, and I'm hoping one day I could uh, own my own training facility. Wow. Yes, yeah, sir. There you go. So, uh, well, maybe you could hire Sean Na as a physical train, therapist at the training <laughs> facility. Huh? Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> there you go. Well, CJ, it's great to have you as part of the Arizona State program, and uh, uh, best of luck to you and the guys this season, and thanks for stopping by and visiting with us. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. You're welcome it. anytime, my friend. Thank you. Thank Good you. to see you. That's Sun yeah, Devil sir. defensive lineman. C.J. Fight, our guest on this final segment of this week's Sun Devil Extra edition. And with that, we bring down the curtain on this week's show, and we thank you for joining us. A couple of other thank yous before we go. Uh, we want to thank our executive producer, ASU Senior Associate Athletic Director, Doug Tamaro, for his help. Thanks as well to our terrific engineer producer, Sean Crespin of the Mountain America Credit Union Sun Devil Radio Network. And a shout out to our buddy DJ Foster from Sun Devil Football for his help in uh, this week's show. We will be back next week with another edition of Sun Devil Extra, and we do hope you'll make plans to join us. Have a great week, everybody. I'm Tim Healy. So long for now.